What's up you guys? It is Friday night here at Agua Caliente in the desert. We're gonna hop into the 2-5 game. I'm not gonna bore you guys. Let's get right into the hands. I hope the action is crazy on the table. Let's go! We hop into the 2-5 game for $2,000. In the first hand of the night, we look down at the ladies. When the $10 straddle is on, I raise it up to $35 from the low jack, and only the small blind puts in the call, so we're gonna go heads up to the flop. With a cool $85 out there, the flop comes queen, five, deuce, bang, we flop top set. Dream situation for us, it might be some overkill here, so when the small blind checks it over to me, I check behind here, looking to see if he can catch up on the turn. If I bet here, he's only gonna call me with any of his heart draws, maybe a hand like ace four, ace three, but I decide to check behind here and that brings in the three of clubs on the turn. The opponent bets out now for $120 into the $85 pot. A weird over bet size here, but I still want to build the pot. We're playing pretty deep. That's the benefit here at Agua Caliente. It's a $2,000 max buy-in. So we're playing $1,500 effective here and he bets 120, so I'm going to raise him up to 300. Want to build the size of the pot here and charge him the max for any of his draws. If he has a hand like ace four, oh well, we let him get there. He puts in the call which is interesting i think a hand like ace four or four six would maybe go for another raise here so when he just calls he probably has a worse set a hand like king queen queen jack or just a heart draw so when the river comes a 10 of hearts not exactly the best card because the front door heart draw gets there and to my surprise he leads into us for 320 dollars he has like seven or eight hundred behind do i go for the raise and ship it all in other than a hand like pocket fives or pocket deuces i think we're only going to get called by better hands so i think better of it and just slide three 20 into the middle indicating a call if he has us beat it's probably going to be a heart flush but he turns over king 10 of clubs for just the air ball bluff there he picked up some equity on the turn but ultimately went for the bluff on the river very strange line from the opponent but we're happy to take down that 1300 dollars pot let's go up around 600 dollars on the session already we upgrade our queens to kings the 10 dollars straddle is still on and i open up to 35 dollars from the low jack our buddy jesse a local reg here at agua caliente he's in the hijack he puts in the call, the small blind, and the straddle do as well. We're going four ways to the flop. When the flop comes jack, nine, eight with two spades, we're playing four-handed and the board is very connected. Any of the players could have a set here, except maybe pocket jacks. They'd probably just re-raise us pre. So considering I'm out of position to three other players on a very draw-heavy board, I start with a check here. You may think this is weird, but I'm just not trying to build a pot here against three other opponents. If all the money gets in here, we're going to be losing against hands like pocket nines, pocket eights, jack, jack nine, jack eight, and a hand like queen 10. So I really like my check here, contrary to popular belief. Jesse, our buddy, puts in a bet of $100, and now the small blind does something strange and re-raises to $300. When the action's back over to me, I definitely have underplayed my hand. I also have the king of spades in my hand, thereby blocking some of the flush draws. I'm giving the small blind and Jesse credit for a very strong hand here, and I show the guy to my right for mucking my cards. Yes, you got that right. I just check mucked pocket kings on a jack nine, eight flop but I think this is a great play in the long run. When Jesse puts in the call, it confirms our suspicions he had a great hand. When the three of clubs peels off on the turn, there's 745 in the middle, and the small blind now rips it all in for 675. Come on, you guys. Is he ripping in for 675 with a naked spade draw? I doubt it. He's got to have two pair at worst, probably a set or a straight. Really loving my fold, and the small blind's going to win that pot. We've upgraded in the last two hands. Now we're going to downgrade to jack nine offsuit from the small blind. The straddle's on. There's one call. Naturally, I'm going to put in the call as well, and the big blind does too. The straddle checks, so we're going to see a flop here, very multi weight, which gives us top pair. Jack 10 7 with two hearts. Pretty decent board for us, and the hijack leads out for $20, I put in the call. When the turn comes the nine, it gives us two pair, but it puts a four liner, any eight will have us beat. I decide though to get some more value here and bet out for 40 bucks, not looking him to check behind with any heart draw, or maybe a worse two pair like 10-7. I bet out for 40, and the opponent puts in the call. So we're going to a river, which comes a red card, but it's the deuce of diamonds. Gonna go for thin value here against any worse two pair. I bet out for $15. Yes, you got that right. The 10% pot size bet gets called by the hijack. I turn over my jack nine and he mucks his cards. Squeezed out a little bit more value there. 15 more McDoubles coming my way. We scooped that $190 pot.
2600 now in our stack. It's almost 10 p.m. We look down at the jacks, the jiggities, the yannies. I'm on the button. The under the gun opens it up for $15, and the cutoff puts in the call. Should we play for 15 here, or should we play for 60 bucks? I think it's much better to play a larger pot here with a great hand. I make it 60 bucks. Both the opponent's calls are going three ways in position to a flop. When the flop comes king nine three rainbow. Under the gun checks, the cutoff checks, and I think this is a decent board to go for a C bet. I'll have more of the pocket kings, ace king, king queens in my hand than under the gun and cutoff will. So I elect to go for a $75 bet into both opponents. Good news for us, the under the gun gets out of the way. Bad news for us though, the cutoff now decides to rip it all in for 370. And given the fact there's really no draws on this board, I don't think he's doing this with a hand like jack 10 or queen 10, queen jack, just having a gutter. Probably has a hand like king 10, king queen, considering I have the jacks in my hand, he can't really have king jack. I turn over my cards face up and he turns over ace king of spades. Interesting, he just called 15 and then called my 60 with a very strong hand. But uh, who said poker's dead? Ace king of spades is going to take down that $180 pot. After a bunch of folding, I end up getting moved to the main game here. I'm in the hijack and I look down at pocket fives and I open it up to $20. The cutoff puts in the call and the button now re-raises to $55. When the big blind calls, I do as well and that brings in the cutoff. We're going four ways to a flop here looking to flop a set which doesn't come, it comes 10, 6, 3 with two spades. The action ends up checking over to the cutoff who bets out for $225. Pretty no brainer if it folds back to us, we're just gonna muck our cards. But our action gets even easier when the big blind re-raises to 450 and I get out of the way. This hand is another example of why poker is not dead. I look down at king nine of diamonds from the small blind. Plus one opens it up to $25 in the player in the plus two position. He puts in the call. The action folds to me. I call and the big blind does as well. We're going off to the flop. The flop comes king jack seven with one diamond. Pretty great board for us. We have top pair, backdoor straight draw, backdoor diamond draw. I start with a check. Checks over to the plus one position who made it 25 pre and uh, she makes it $75 now. I'm not going anywhere with my top pair and backdoor draws. I put in the call, which brings the deuce of diamonds in on the turn. Great guard for us. We pick up nine additional outs on the river in case we're behind a hand like king jack, king queen, uh, maybe pocket sevens even. I check it over to her once again. The opponent now goes for a half pot size bet here, and I think when she bets into three other opponents on the flop and then continues on this turn, she's definitely going to have a hand that has us beat. Normally, I might go for a check raise in this instance, but I don't think she's folding any of the hands that she'd go for two streets here with pocket sevens isn't going to fold king jack definitely not going to fold maybe ace king i could get to fold but i'm not going to try it here against this specific opponent i just decided to put in the call and hope for a nine or a diamond on the river when the river comes the three of diamonds Bang! we river the flush great spot for us and just pause this video real quick and let me know down in the comments do you lead this river or do you check it over to her for a third time? Okay, interested to read what you guys left me in the comments, but I decided to check it over to her and here's why. I think when she bets twice on the flop and the turn, she's gonna have a very strong hand. Two pair at the worst, probably a hand like pocket sevens, pocket jacks, king jack, something of that nature, and I don't think she's gonna check it behind. So when I check it over to her, she turns over pocket sevens and checks behind. Are you kidding me? She checked behind a set. Don't take any notes from this, you guys. If you have pocket sevens in this instance, you have have to go for value. You can get value from your opponents like having king jack, king queen. Just people get sticky here at these low stakes and pocket sevens is just way too high up on the totem pole to be checking behind. Definitely did not expect her to have that. If she would have bet and I would have raised, I think she probably would have had to call, but uh, she made a great check back in this moment. But I think in the long run, it's a definitely a losing play and one that you should not emulate. I'm taking down this $500 pot, but it honestly feels like a loss and everybody at this table knows that I missed out on significant value, probably two or three hundred dollars worth to be frank. After that debacle of a hand, we witness pocket kings versus pocket kings at our table. Pretty interesting spot. In our next hand, we look down with 2400 in our stack at pocket tens from the small blind. The low jack opens it up to $20 and the cutoff puts in the call. The button does as well, and we're not playing for 20 bucks here. Out of position in a multi-weight pot with pocket tens, I three bet to $110. Does this thin the field out like we wanted to? No, all other players put in the call. We're going four ways to the flat. Top. Jeez. Let's hope for a 10 on this board or some undercards, and that's exactly what the dealer puts out. 977. 
Hoping the opponents don't have a 7 in their range, I start with the check. After thinking about this hand for some time, I think I like a small bet here of around 75 to 125 bucks. You want to thin the field, protect your hand against hands like King Jack, King Queen, Ace Queen, Ace 10, things of that nature. So I don't really like my check here, and the action ends up getting checked around. I think a bet here would have gotten called by worse, like hands like 6s, 8s, something of that nature, and folded out a lot of hands with over cards. But lucky for us though, the turn card peels off the 5 of spades. It's not an over card like we were fearing so I think it's time to build a pot now deny some hands some equity and get some value I bet out for hundred and forty dollars 440 in the middle and the low jack decides to look us up he's the only player to do so and we're going heads up to the river which comes the jack of diamonds not exactly the best card it's an over card but we can't be too worried what's the opponent calling us with on the turn I think a hand like pocket eights pocket six maybe hand like ten nine so I decided to go for a blocker bet here of 75 bucks around one tenth the size of the pot if he raises us he's representing representing a 7 or maybe a straight like 6-8 but uh, he just decides to put in the call and I think we have the best hand now I confidently turn over my pocket tens $870 going our way he mucks his cards and uh, pretty stoked to take down that pot as well a pretty significant one at that four ways for 110 on the flop and we're going to take that down with our pocket tens all right you guys mid-session update just won that nice little pot there with the pocket tens we're up $900 on this session let's get back in there right now let's get into some more hands let's go it's approaching one in the morning. We look down at pocket tens again. We have 2,900 in our stack and we're in the low jack. The player in the plus one position raises it up to $15. Player on my right puts in the call and I three bet to $45. The button, our buddy Tano, another local reg here at Agua Caliente, puts in the call and both others do as well. Going off to a pot here, multi-way, which comes king 5-9 with two hearts. Not exactly the best board, but it will favor our preflop raising range. Given the fact there's three other opponents in the hand and we're out of position, I decide to start with a check. A good rule of thumb for all you guys trying to learn out there is if you're multi-way and you don't have a very strong hand, probably best just to check and reevaluate on the turn. So when the turn comes to three of clubs, there's still $220 out there, but I'm not going to bet into this field once again. I check again. Tano now takes up the betting lead and bets out for 70 bucks. And for one third the size of the pot, I'm the only person that looks them up for 70 bucks. We're off to the river, which comes the nine of clubs. Pairs the board, it gives us two pair, I guess. The front door heart draw bricks off. I check it over to him. If he wants a bluff, I'm giving him some rope. Makes no sense to lead into him here. And when I check over to him on the river, he bets out for 150. Honestly, a little bit less than half the size of the pot is a pretty strong bet considering you bet turn and river. But something just smells fishy about this hand. I've played a lot of hands with him in the past, and he likes to bluff on occasion. He knows I'm filming. He knows he's going to make the vlog. So I put in 150 bucks, and unfortunately, he turns over pocket threes for the turn set and the rivered boat. Unfortunately, I gave him another $150 there, but uh, it's going to a good place. Nice hand, Tano. And we're on to the last hand of the night. We've been really patient in this one. We look down at pocket aces, and I'm in the small blind. Six limps to me. Yes, you got that right. Great action here at Agua. And I re-raise it to 40 bucks. I think that's a good price. Maybe I could have gone 50, considering the fact that all six people call. Yes, all six people call the $40 bet. And uh, we're going seven ways to a flop, which comes ace, queen, jack. Bang, we flop top set. Set of aces, very draw heavy board here. Hand like king 10 already has us beat, but there's two spades on board, so maybe somebody has a flush draw. Given the fact there's seven of us in the pot, I usually would start with a check, but I have such a nutted hand here, and I can get value from hands like ace queen, ace jack, queen jack, maybe even a hand like queens or jacks. I don't know how people play these days. I bet out for $65. When you have a hand as strong as top set, you're not really gonna get called in too many spots, but don't tell these players that. Three players call, under the gun plus one, under the gun plus two and cut off our buddy jesse puts in the call as well still four ways to the turn which alleviates all of our pain if someone had a hand like king 10 it comes the jack of clubs we fill up and it's pretty sure we have the nuts here i don't think anyone has pocket jacks in their range given the fact there's 475 out there let's target anyone with a singular jack in their hand i bet out for 115 dollars the only person that puts in the call is our buddy jesse he tosses in the 115 and we're off to the river which comes the king of diamonds not really sure if this is a great card or a bad card for him. Might scare him off as any 10 now has a straight, but the board is paired as well, so uh, he's got a lot to be worried about. He only has around $300 left in his stack, and I rip it in. He thinks about it for a little while, hems and haws, before tossing in all of his remaining green chips. Sorry, Jesse, those are coming my way. I turn over top boat, and uh, he doesn't show his cards. We're going to take down that $1,300 pot to end the night. Let's freaking go. After that great hand, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. All right, you guys. 
guys, that wraps up our session. Got into the game for 2,000, up for 33.17, a profit of 1,317. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Good luck on the felt as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.